구독과 좋아요, 알람 설정까지 하시면 영상을 가장 빠르게 받아보실 수 있습니다. Facebook市场是十パーセント以上の下落장이곧재개될수있다고하는데요미국市장이과매수상황이고투자자들이매우안주하고있어十パーセント上昇に出처지고있다네요현재엔비디아애플마이크로소프트아마존메타알파벳테
you've talked about the importance of regulation and you called for this, this moratorium. You know, when you've been talking for years about the need for regulation, what is the scenario that really keeps you up at night? Well, I don't, th I don't think the AI is going to try to destroy all humanity, but it might put us under strict controls. Isn't the more likely nasty outcome that rather than AI taking over, somebody nefariously harnesses that power to achieve societal control, stroke, military superiority, um, and that actually some country around the world decides to use it in a different way? Uh, yes, that, that's what I mean by like AI uses as a weapon. And the, the pen is mightier than the sword. So one of the first places we have to be careful of AI being used is in social media to manipulate public opinion. If you look at the election that's coming up, how big a role will this big shift in AI capability over the last few months, which will obviously continue through the next year, do you think, in the messaging and the way that people get told um, the different pitches of, of the candidates? I think that's something we need to go and look at for, in, in a big way, is to make sure that there's, we're minimizing the impact of AI manipulation. Um, we're very, certainly very much taking it, taking that seriously at X, X Twitter, you know, and I think we're putting in place all of the protections to um, minimize and certainly detect when we see large-scale manipulation of the system. Elon Musk, thank you very much for joining us. Elon Musk뿐만 아니라 인공지능의 대부라 불리우는 영국의 과학자 제프리 힌턴 기억나시죠? 이분이 AI의 위험성을 알리기 위해 10년 이상 몸담았던 구글을 최근 떠났다고 합니다. 바로 AI의 위험성을 자유롭게 세상에 알리기 위해서인데요. 그는 AI 기술이 적용된 킬러 로봇이 현실이 되는 날이 두렵다고 했는데요. 그의 인터뷰도 한번 보시죠. His job, he couldn't talk, so he quit his job, and now he talks. Excited to hear from you, and a bit afraid. Should they be? I think there are things to be worried about. There's all the normal things that everybody knows about, but there's another threat that's rather different from those, which is if we produce things that are more intelligent than us, how do we know we can keep control? And what tends to happen when... Well, if we're talking about evolution, all these species are evolving, and what tends to happen is it doesn't go well for the less intelligent species. The other one kills it? Not necessarily. Ants look after aphids because they produce honey. Um, but... Ants are in charge. Ants are in charge, yes. Ants are not the humans. It made me realize that these digital intelligences have something we don't have that makes them much better. When one of them knows something, it can tell all the others that's what we don't have with people. So imagine you had 10,000 people, and imagine if when one person learned something, everybody knew it. You could learn a lot more stuff, right? right. And that's why things like ChatGPT knows like 10,000 times as much as any one person. It's because when you train it, there's lots of different copies looking at different bits of the data and learning stuff, and they can all combine what they learn instantly with a bandwidth of like trillions of bits. So can they think? Yes. So imagine the following scenario. I'm talking to Chatbot, and we talk for a bit, and the answers it's given me seem a bit strange to me, and I suddenly realize that it thinks I'm a teenage girl. And I say, what demographic do you think I am? And it says it thinks I'm a teenage girl. Um, so the question is, when I said it's, I suddenly realized it thinks I'm a teenage girl, was that a metaphorical use of the word think, or was that just the same way as we use think? And I strongly believe that use of the word think, when I said it thinks I'm a teenage girl, was exactly the same way of using think as we do with people. And so that was enough to make you say, what, this has accelerated beyond my comfort level? I suddenly realized maybe they already are better, they're already better than us. They're a better way of doing learning. And if we make them bigger, they'll get much smarter than us. They already know more than any one person. I, I understand that things could go awry, but I still think that people hear the notion of danger and they dismiss it as hyperbole. I thought it was hyperbole for a long time because I thought these things were a long way off. I thought there will eventually be danger, but I thought um, focusing on it now is unnecessary because it'll be 30 to 50 years before these things get more intelligent than us. But this combination of realizing that they might have a much better way of learning than we have, because they can share knowledge instantly, and seeing things like 
ChatGPT or Palm at Google made me realize these things are already pretty intelligent and if they've got a better form of intelligence than ours then it gets to be much more urgent. You can't um, kill people, you can't hurt people. It would be nice if we could do that but just remember that one of the main players in developing these machines is defense departments. Mm. Isaac Asimov said if you make a smart robot the first rule should be do not harm people. Well, I don't think that's going to be the first rule in a robot soldier produced by a Defense Department. Right. But is there not some language we can give them so that they can police themselves? How does it work out when things police themselves? Yeah, not well. China, Russia, we, we can't stand each other. They, they, all these countries, they're, they're angry. But we, we have a, a common concern. Exactly. For the superintelligence is taking over, not for all the other things, but for that, we're all in the same boat. It's like a global nuclear war. We all lose. And so that's the situation in which warring tribes cooperate. An external enemy that's bigger than them will force them to cooperate because they get the same payoff as each other. And so this threat is like that. Do you think China understands that? Yes. What, what makes you think that? There's researchers in China who are talking about this. Do the Americans understand it? I think, yes. Senior political leaders in the States are paying attention now, and they're getting very interested in... So it's not just things like fakes and job losses, which are the sort of immediate concerns. They're also becoming interested in this existential threat. These things taking over. The White House is indeed talking about a moral obligation for tech companies to consider the risks of AI, not just the benefits. 자 이렇게 AI가 무엇인가에서부터 관련 위험 요소에 대한 이슈까지 쭉 살펴봤는데요. AI를 이해하는 데좀 도움이 되셨으면 좋겠습니다. 앞으로 AI 기업들을 다루게 될때더잘 이해하시게 되겠죠. 빅테크 기업들의 인공지능 개발 경쟁에 AI의 순기능을 살리면서도 예상되는 사회적 문제점은 제대로 보완하기 위한 논의들이 이제 겨우 시작인데요. 앞으로 엄청난 발전이 예상되는 분야인 만큼 적절한 규제와 윤리적 가이드라인을 수립하여 안전한 개발과 사용이 추구되면 좋겠습니다. 오늘도 시청하여 주셔서 감사합니다. 즐거운 주말 보내세요. 감사합니다.